you we've touched about you've touched upon this uh, at the beginning of the show very briefly, but I would love to if the panel would love to go uh, would go into it in more depth. Uh, the definition of life you was very briefly described. Um, I'd like to urge the panel to speculate. Where does uh, life begin? How about a simpler definition, say as um, a life? Life is a, a configuration, a self-sustaining and replicating configuration of matter. What? Uh, how far can we stretch that uh, definition? To what can we apply that? Uh, the most extreme uh, that comes to mind would be bubbles. Can we consider bubbles being alive, soap bubbles or whatever? Uh, and uh, be, um, yeah, just basically that. Well, I, I read out the definition that the person I was exchanging um, gave me for what he considered to be a living organism, and I, I think if I'm right, he said that he'd taken that from um, a, I can't remember what source, but it was a perfectly reasonable source, and I've got no serious issue with the definition that he uh, came up with. As I said, I it has to be a cell that shows growth, uh, metabolism, homeostasis, uh, response to stimuli, and can reproduce. Yes, so, yes, but how many of those characteristics are uh, strictly based on the way life has evolved on Earth? Well, if before, before we go any further, I mean, I, I generally, I do like um, having firm definitions for things so people can understand um, what we're talking about, but wh where are you headed with this? Um, what What is the purpose of narrowing down or, or well, it you know, cementing really some definition to, of life? It doesn't really relate to uh, creationist arguments or anything, but uh, consider uh, uh, cosmology stu uh, studies. Uh, if we have a more robust and simpler definition of life, then we may be uh, more prepared to recognize life on other planets, for example. And I think that's important. What would you? What would your definition be? Uh, something that can uh, self-replicate, a, config uh, a, sust a sustained configuration of matter. So you would accept my example, the, the quasi example I um, sent back to this person of a RNA uh, self-replicating molecule. That would be life to you, would it? Definitely, yes. Okay, concordance. So, my work with viruses, I have a very loose definition because we we treat viruses as though they were alive. Um, I, I would use the most reductionist type of definition, and it's one that I would I would rather include everything than risk excluding anything. So, in my case, high fidelity replication of heritable information is the definition of what is a living thing. Um, and that could include things like memes, like things on the internet can be considered virtual living organisms. Now, when we go to, you know, give voting rights and the rights, uh, you know, uh, freedom from discomfort or whatever, we obviously confine it to a much narrower definition. But from a point of view of a virologist, you, you want to focus on the most essential element, which is that you have generations of the same organism or a definable organism. And that's so important for things like virioids, which are even smaller, or, or, or prions, which are, you know, single proteins. When you start to get down to, aha, it must metabolize or it must respond to its environment, you end up excluding things that behave very much like life, that behave very much like what we have thought of traditionally as life. But of course, it's, it's all a semantics. It's, it's, um, there's no best answer. There's no best definition. And different biologists will use different definitions depending on what their goals are. Um, but I think high fidelity replication, the beginning of that was the big, beginning of life. It would be quite sad if we someday, someday take a mission, not unmanned or whatever, a probe mission to a planet that has chemical potential for organisms, and um, just because of our uh, inadequate definitions, we do not recognize life on those planets. Th that would be quite sad, for one thing. Uh, also, on the definition of concordance uh, pitched, um, how about one step further? How about uh, low fidelity replication? Why wouldn't you call that life? Because it, it's uh, self limiting. So if you have uh, a system that replicates itself but not very well, 
what you end up with in each generation is different from the previous generation. It's not a single thing. It's a, a devolving process. Uh, that's, that's the difference is, is the, the point of high fidelity is that it it's, goes into perpetuity. It, it continues. Um, whereas if you have, let's say, just a chemical reaction and then it winds itself down and it stops, then that wasn't really life. It was, it was a, it was a chemical reaction. It's subject to entropy, right? It doesn't oppose those gradients in nature that almost inevitably lead to a loss of energy and a loss of process. So, so there are a lot of things bound up in the concept of high fidelity. Now, where the line for high and low fidelity, uh, is broken is in the ability of the, th- Thing to, to perpetuate itself over a certain period of time. And we could, of course, slide that scale wherever we wanted to and, and define something as either in or out. You know, fire uh, replicates itself. Fire replicates itself by burning new things. You get the same kind of outgassing. But it's not high fidelity. It, 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 may, it produces different types of material, and it doesn't keep going. Once it runs out of fuel, it's no longer self-replicating. That's a very can satisfying I, Can I jump in answer. there before you come back? Um, Michael, as I say, joined us um, at, at the last uh, moment. Uh, he does have uh, other things that he has to deal with. He may be coming back to us. Uh, it depends. But for now, we are going to have to say goodbye to Michael. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, hopefully, we will see you later. Um, um, yeah, it might be very quick, but uh, yeah. Sorry about that. But good conversation, and I hope to be back. Maybe okay. in the next 20 to minutes to okay, okay, thanks very much. Um, and I'm sorry, you were about to make a uh, comment, uh, Gabriel. So no, no, it was just, uh, I was just going to know that Concordance's uh, explanation was very satisfying and uh, quite uh, eloquent. I mean, Oh, he's the, wonderfully eloquent. The, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> defeating entropy would be the thing that makes life, uh, you know, inspiring, fascinating to us. Okay, yeah, we just um, have to be careful not to just include things like crystallization, which appears to uh, oppose entropy by absorbing local energy, right? So there are a lot of processes that do that, but they don't do it very much. They, they the again, the process sort of uh, dies out, and so we're talking about a process that continues. Gabriel, thank you very much for the call. I am going to move on.